Hi, it's Bridget with Above Life Channel. Today's channel, we are going to have a conversation with Buddy Holly. Now, I anticipate there may be more than one spirit that will be speaking with us today, but we'll have to see how that goes. All right, so let's begin here. I'm just going to connect. And we're going to start right away. Um, my husband and I, when he got home from work, we started having this conversation about um, the plane crash because it came up in a different uh, channeling that I did and sort of randomly. And I'm feeling like it's important to talk about it now. So we're doing it here. But I know that um, Richie Valens and Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper were all on the plane, the same plane. And I know it was a really big deal when it crashed. And, you know, the day the music died. And so... Um, I think it's important to connect and talk about that. And Buddy Holly is the easiest one to connect to. So I'm going to, I could feel him so strong just a little bit ago in the kitchen. So let me just see if I can. I'm also going to bring in my spirit friend that hooks me up with the afterlife, uh, Prince, to come in to help me. Oftentimes I can connect with his energy first and then open up to Buddy. Buddy Holly is so sweet. He just came right in. He seems tall, kind of gangly. Now, um, tall to me. Okay, tall, skinny and gangly. No offense. I'm just describing to the people how he looked. Um, his hair is a little muffy, mopped. Um, I will share that I love you. Like, I... A uh, hundred years ago, like probably 25, 30 years ago, some, at some point I saw a movie about your life and it wasn't a documentary. It was like an entertainment thing. And so I know a little bit about you, but I don't know like about the accident and that kind of thing. But, oh, I loved, I loved, I loved the music, the, the roller coaster, the song that talks about that every day. It's getting closer to that one. Oh my God. I can hear it in my head. Now I'm getting really emotional because I can feel your energy. You are so, oh my gosh, you guys, everybody that's watching, please come back to your heart space. He's saying, ah, solar plexus. He's like, let's go for the star power. And like, go down into your solar plexus. He's like, you can feel all you want to feel. You can give me the feels. But he's like, go to the solar plexus. Go into that soul, which is right at your belly, you guys, right at that belly button. Feel that, connect with this <laughs> and feel his energy because he is so genuine. This man is like sunshine and I have so much emotion and and it feels good. I mean, I know that the world grieved for you and there was so much sadness for you and the other um, souls that were lost that day. And I, I know in part I'm probably feeling the essence of that but I just want to share that you are so, you have such a genuine energy, so kind. And I appreciate that because it's easy to connect with you and I love that. He says, you're welcome. He says, you're welcome. And he's kind of hunched over a little bit, like he's sitting on a couch. And um, he says, you're welcome, you're welcome. And he's got his guitar right next to him, like right beside him, like just ready to just pick it up and go. And he's talking about, um, you know, um, He's talking about, right away, he's talking about, oh, music, you know, music was my life, very influenced by um, some, some, um, he's saying, kind of like Elvis, bluegrass music or blues music, um, a lot of what, no, okay, so, hmm. a lot of what he was influenced by, see, the word choice of them is different than the word choice of me. I'm going to use modern terms, um, African-American. He's actually using a different word. And um, you know, he's saying Negro, so I'm just going to say that because that's the truth. He's saying I was inf influenced by a lot of different uh, musicians and very, you know, like Southern kind of thing. A little bit of a flavor there, flair there. Tennessee, Memphis, Mississippi, that energy. Um, but... I also feel him with his mom, living with his mom. I don't see dad. I don't know what's up with that. I also see a sister potentially in the house that he grew up in and maybe a younger sister as well. I also saw right away that I will share, and it's getting really warm for me. Um, yeah, New Orleans. I know I feel that. I feel that whole southern area for you, um, influencing you. Um, I don't feel like you're from there, though. I don't feel like you're from the south. Um, but I feel the vibes and the unique 
sounds, like mixing the sounds. I kind of like Elvis. There's got to be some similarities between you and Elvis because it feels like there is, and I'm not sure what that would be. Um, but I feel this little, and maybe it's the guitar, the way you play the guitar or something. Um, he's like, it's not the dancing. It's not. It's not the moving. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's funny. That's good. And he's like, it's not the moving. Um, it feels like newly, were you newly married? I feel like there's marriage or there's engagement. And I know, I, I'm going to say I know because I feel like there's a baby. And um, unless there's like a really serious girlfriend and there's a baby after or there was this desire to have a baby or something, but I feel like a baby, there's a child. And I feel like it's connected to you. And um, I feel you young, like 20s, I would say. And but not young 20s, not 22, 23, 23, 23, 24, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23. feels pretty good. Um, I feel you very, um, I feel that you would take a stand and speak up for what you didn't think was right, whether it be for you or another musician. I feel like you have a lot of respect for other musicians and and, enter and, 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 and entertainers, let's say that. And, and little Richard comes up again. Oh, I was talking to my husband prior to just, I said, we have to record this because there's so much information around and I got to figure it out. And um, I saw little Richard and I'm like, what? Like, you know, I, um, I feel like you would stick up for other people. And I feel like racism is an issue. And I feel like it's a uh, kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of or it is let's just be clear it's a big deal and um at that time and I feel like you um were just respectful of people's talents and their gifts you didn't care what color they were where they were from what side of the tracks they lived on what have you I feel like you just had a genuine you just had a genuine love and appreciation for other people having skills and gifts and I feel like you st spoke up for that like you said stuff like hey you know hey no let him play it's fine you know, let him play or let him come up here and play. Um, I feel that. And I feel you being popular like in the South too for some reason. I'm not sure what that's about, but I've, I keep getting drawn to the South. I'm not sure what that's about. Again, a little bit of an Elvis flair. So like Memphis, like Tennessee. Um, um, I don't know if you're big in Nashville. Maybe you were. Um, and Mississippi. And like I feel that. Or New Orleans. I feel that. Uh, Louisiana, 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 I should say that. Um, I've actually been to New Orleans, been to Tennessee too, and Mississippi actually. Um, can you talk about a little bit about the circumstances surrounding your death? He's like, it's not much to tell. It's a plane crash, <laughs> like I know. And he said, um, so let's see, okay, so. He said, you know, those things aren't predictable. I feel like there's weather or something. I feel like there's um, pressure. Like the plane isn't, like it's there's pressure and I feel it shaking. Like I feel them recognizing, the people who are in the plane, I feel them recognizing that there's problems. And so were you aware of your death or were you aware of the circumstances that were um, ultimately um, resulted in your transition into the afterlife? Were you aware of that? Well, yeah, pretty much aware, yes. <laughs> he said, yeah, pretty much. Um, that would be a big affirmative yes. And, um, but it was unexpected. That's what he's saying. I want to say it's weather related. Like, and I live in Minnesota and I want to say it's like a weather storm thing or something. But I think there was a multitude of circumstances that created the situation to not be ideal. It almost feels like the plane was too heavy. Like there's too much stuff in it. Um, like there was too much, it couldn't handle it. The little plane couldn't handle it. I know it was a smaller plane because my husband made that comment before he just said the little plane or whatever he said. Um, and then I'm gonna share something that came up before um, Buddy, We, um, my husband and I were chatting in the kitchen when you kind of showed up right away. And I'm like, oh, Buddy Holly, I love Buddy. I love the energy. I love Buddy Holly. Um, and really all I know is that you feel good. <laughs> And I liked your song. <laughs> That's it. And you're genuine. You feel good. You feel good. I love that. But um, he said, so, okay, small plane. And then 
um, oh, I was describing how I felt like we were talking about Richie Valens because Ri because Richie was with you. And now I see Richie standing next to you. Hey, Richie. Um, love, love the song La Bamba. Okay. Um, and I feel like for from Richie's perspective, too, it was like this opportunity, like this was a big opportunity. He was really excited about it. And I feel um, running for the plane, running for the plane, trying to get to the plane. Or there's some kind of, a, I know that there's some kind of a... Um, like I literally see like the doors closing and jumping in or something like that. Like I see like last minute. Um, but I also feel like there was a change in something else. Like it could be staffing or the pilots or something on board the plane wasn't the way it was originally supposed to be the itinerary. Something was different than what it was intended to be. But I feel like the plane is heavier, which maybe there's more people than we're supposed to be on it. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, so yes, you knew, you guys knew, were aware that the plane was in distress. You knew that um, that was happening. And so, I mean, what goes through your mind? I mean, what, I can't even imagine what you pray. He says you pray to God, you pray to God. And that the people you left behind would be taken care of, would be cared for. Ooh, there's a huge, he is talking about a woman leaving a woman behind and he is so incredibly sad. So sad. There's so much sadness there. Like, um, uh, here we go with names. Please, I don't, names, Diana, Diane, D name. I see a D name oh, for Cornello. That's kind of a big thing for me right now. D names. So I screw them up sometimes. Um, it's a tragedy. I do feel like somebody tried to market the tragedy or make money off the tragedy. This is really sad, but I'm sure it would happen nowadays too. Um, like promotions or something. And I was sharing with my husband that it felt like y'all were going, you all were going to, like um, a, a hundred years ago when they used to do like Night at the Apollo and stuff and people would get on stage or whatever. Um, that's the kind of image I have, but I'm behind the stage and all I see is like, light out here and a spotlight on a man that's standing in the middle of the stage and it looks like you and I mean I'm assuming it's you just black sh the shadow and just the it just everything's gray and I can see that and I can see you saying thank you thank you and then kind of drawing your head and putting your hand up like thank you and then kind of backing up and getting off the stage that's what I see. So it looks like small venues, perhaps. There was a tour or something, small venues. And I feel like somebody was added at the last minute. And I feel like Richie has a tremendous amount of, like, he's really excited. He's like, oh, I'm so excited. Oh, this is going to be so great. You know, like, really excited, but also nervous. Right? Like, nervous, like, wanting to do a good job and stuff. But I feel like he might have been separated. Like, I don't feel like his whole band was on the plane either. I feel like he, there's separation. So, uh... I feel kind of like, oh, this is a big thing. I feel like somebody wouldn't have died if they weren't on that plane. So they, oh, I feel a huge separation or a stepping out or some things being pulled apart, different things happening to make this the right, the right circumstances. And then I hear pilot air. I don't know what that's about. I heard pilot air. Um, everybody wants to blame everybody for stuff, right, that happens. He said, okay, so he's like, there's a lot of good work to do, you know, there's a lot of good music to make and I've got a lot of good work to do in the world. And he's sharing, so talk to me about that, because uh, I feel like there's this legacy of musicians, like all of these incredible musicians, and like, he, so who would you like? Who would you really be interested in? Or who would, uh, um, I might not recognize who they are, so you're going to have to be specific. I, 19, what is 1954, 1953, 54, something? Um, and then five, five, I see, so I see double fives. Um, oh, somebody died before you died in your family. Somebody important to you died before you died, made a transition before you did. It was, it was difficult. Okay. That makes sense. Um, talk to me about musicians, people that, that nowadays you'd be like, wow, he looks over at Prince and he says, well, Prince, <laughs> but he, he doesn't count because he's here. <laughs> like, yeah, I know, right? He doesn't count because he's, he's a spirit too, an afterlife. Um, there's so much gratitude. Um, I'm going to share with you guys, Buddy Holly has so much gratitude. Like he feels really, I feel like 
Uh, for sure one number one. It looks like there were three number ones or something or three really big hits. And I also see you on American Bandstand. Did you actually get to perform on American Bandstand? It looks like you did. Um, and Dick Clark is actually there too, isn't he? Yeah, let's not bring him in. I don't need a big party here. Um, yeah, American Bandstand, Bandstand. I can hear it. I can feel it, the vibes and the spinning of the record and stuff. There's somebody else that I don't recognize who has big hair. His hair goes whoop like this, and he looks like, uh, it goes like this. It's like a big, um, whatever they did in like the 50s, and he looks like the guy that's introducing the acts and spinning the records right here. I don't know if he was on American Bandstand. It doesn't look like it's Dick Clark. I don't know if Dick Clark had a sidekick or somebody that would do that, like be the DJ, but I see that guy. I don't know who he is, but I can see him. Um, and, uh, he's telling me somebody, Frankie, somebody named Frankie. Um, okay. So he's, he's showing me at the period of time around when he was popular, um, some other musicians, I think he's showing me that, that he respected or liked or, or um, thought were good. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I can't get him to talk. I want, okay. I can't get him to zoom in on, I just feel his energy. It's just his presence is really nice. Um, it's interesting to wonder about what would have happened had, had this accident not occurred. I feel like other, there are other people that would never have gotten the big break that they would have gotten had you not been able to go where you needed to be. So I feel like you're on this tour and like you're going someplace and it's almost as though, like this is the feeling I get, it's almost as though as if you would have performed then these this other people would not have had the opportunity to perform and therefore would not have been able to have the career that they had or got noticed the way that they got noticed, that kind of a thing. It gave somebody else an opportunity, which makes sense. That's kind of who you are and how you are. All right. I wish I could get more details on this. I can't get a lot of details on the actual plane crash. Richie talks about his mom. I can see his mom praying, like she's holding the rosary and just, just praying, just praying. My Richie, my Richie, I can see that. That's heartbreaking. Oh, that's really heartbreaking. And I know the other guy, the third guy, if I didn't mention him, is, was the big bopper. I, I don't have any, I don't really know who that is, so I'm sorry, with respect. I, I wouldn't know you if I saw you, I wouldn't recognize you. He, may, he might be the guy with the big swoop hair that's like a, it's almost like puffy in the front, and like a duck or something. No, I'm not, I'm no offense, I'm just explaining to what it looks like. Looks different nowadays, we look way different nowadays. Um, I see some guy that has this big, huge Texas hat on, I don't know who that is, I don't know if it's a, uh, big huge like Texas hat um, white guy I don't know who he is he feels like he's rich like he has a lot of money or he wants to have a lot of money he feels a little bit like a I'm you know um, st strategic business guy something could be a producer promoter could be a agent I don't know but it, I feel this guy um, there's some kind of a significance He's got a big Texas hat, big, huge, tall Texas hat. And it looks like it's a light color, so he must be a good guy, even if he feels a little bit like, what the heck are you doing, buddy? Energy. I see some kind of big record deal, something really big. I don't know if something really big just happened or something, and now you're promoting, or if something really big was going to happen and it didn't happen because, unfortunately, the tragedy happened. All right. I need to wrap this up because I'm feeling like I don't have a lot more energy around this right now. So if you have questions or if you, as always, want to fill in the blanks below, go ahead and do that in the comment section. <clears throat> Thank you so much for being here. Remember to subscribe if you never want to miss another channel. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thanks for being here with this interview with Buddy Holly, a little... Um, view of also Richie Valens and a little bit of the Big Bopper, just a quick look at the Big Bopper. Thank you so much.